بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسنيما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أصحابك النجوم بأيهم اقتديتم اهتديتم أما بعد My dear uh, brothers and sisters In a time and a period of human history Like we are living in today Where there's so many distractions and there's so many things that, subhanAllah, entice our fancies. And there are so many things that we, you know, can get involved in. And, you know, I've mentioned this a number of times, but, you know, the simple example is, you know, just go into your phone to call someone, just to call one person and then see what happens, how long it takes you just to make that call. You know, this message pops up, that message pops up. You want to check this and check that. And so we get involved in a lot of different things. And so in a world where there's so many distractions, in a world where, you know, as the Prophet Sallallahu described, you know, the time in which difficulty and fitna comes, the Prophet Sallallahu describes it as, you know, that the fitna will come, you know, the tribulations and the trials come. It comes like, you know, the darkness, the different portions of the dark night. As the night is getting darker, you can't really pinpoint this is the point where, you know, it got darker or this is the point where it's very difficult, right? It's like the different portions of the night that get darker and darker. But the question lies for us, what do we do? How do we realign ourselves how can we you know put ourselves on the correct path how can we you know well and truly you know go back to the basics and understand what to do and you know in regards to that there's a beautiful saying of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an and he talks about the sahaba right he talks about the companions and he says something that really you know it really beckons a person to sit there and think wow you know like 
How could he even say, even just to say this, it's like, it's such a heavy, you know, statement. But subhanAllah, that's what happens when you're with the best of the best. That's what happens when you're with that generation that, you know, overlook everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That generation that was, as is described in the Quran, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رضي الله عنه. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran that وَرَضُوعًا رضي الله عنهم وَرَضُوعًا That they are pleased, that Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. Look at that. Allah mentions that they're also pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Right? It's, 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 it's a mutual, you know, beautiful, you know, uh, uh, relationship. And Allah mentions the forerunners, the forerunners of the muhajir and the ansar, the two groups of the sahaba, because as we know, the sahaba came in two groups. One group was the one that emigrated, right? The one group was the one that, you know, was moving from Mecca to Medina. And the other group was the people of Medina, and the surrounding areas as well. So you had the muhajir, the people who emigrated, they were immigrants to Medina. And then you had the people of the Dar, the people of the city itself, who were referred to as the Ansar. They were the helpers because, mashallah, they helped the immigrants, right? They helped those people who, who came to them and they opened up their hearts, they opened up their houses, they opened up their markets, and, and, and they said, come and be with us. You know, those, those were the Ansar. So the best of them, Allah says that I am pleased with them and they are pleased with me. What could be better? But in that statement also, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ Right? It's also those people who follow them with goodness. So that's you and me. Inshallah. Say Amin. That inshallah you and me can be amongst those people that we follow them. Especially in this time. You know, everyone gets confused, you know, with... You know, all the different, you know, it happens, all the different fitness that are, you know, coming to us. You know, sometimes we ask ourselves, well, what's next? You know, what's next? You know, we're playing catch up. You know, one thing happens and then, you know, something happens and then, you know, you, you lose your balance and then something else happens and you're like, oh my God, like, can I really survive all of this? And subhanAllah, the key is there. What to do? It's very, very clear. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, I was overseas and, you know, I was sitting with, with a very pious, mashallah, very knowledgeable scholar. And, you know, I asked him a question. I just said to him, I said, Sheikh, listen, you know, how can we prepare? I said, because we're playing, we're playing catch up all the time. How can we prepare for something that we don't know it's coming, but it's coming, right? How can we prepare for something that we don't know it's coming, but it's definitely coming? So how can we be, you know, safe like that? And subhanAllah, he mentioned something very, very simple. He said, you don't need to reinvent the deen. Just stick to the basics. Just stick to the basics. The basics there in the sunnah. In the ayah that I recited at the beginning, the Prophet Sallallahu is told to tell the people that in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, saying if you really, truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you really, you know, you, you have that, that love of Allah, then follow the Prophet Sallallahu Allah, then Allah will love you. So even if you don't have that initial love, that initial inclination, it is told to you that follow the Prophet ﷺ, Allah will love you and you will love him. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, you know, fattabi'uni, yuhbibkum Allah, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you of your sins. And subhanAllah, this is a great thing. This is a beautiful thing. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, coming back to his statement, he said something that really, you know, it's, it's such a heavy statement, but inshallah we'll get through it as much as we can. He says, man istanna faqad istanna biman qad mat. If you're going to follow someone, if you're going to, you know, follow someone and you're going to, you know, try and copy, mimic what they do, then follow the way of those people who have passed away. And he, he mentions who is it. It's not just ev anyone or everyone. He's saying, he says, Ula'ika ashabu Muhammadin. He says, I am referring to the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am telling you to follow the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala. Ula'ika ashabu Muhammadin. Right? Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala You know one time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after Fajr he asked the Sahaba radiallahu anhu he said who today has made an intention for fasting? 
And Abu Bakr said, me. He said, who today has visited a sick person? Abu Bakr said, me. He said, who today has given sadaqah? Abu Bakr said, me. So he's a prophet, I said, Umar anhu is looking in this gathering and he's looking and telling, a oh, prophet of Allah, we just prayed Fajr. <laughs> like it's just, it's only Fajr time. Imagine before Fajr even started, this man has already done so many good deeds. Right? So many good deeds. You know? Before Fajr, subhanAllah, he's already done all of these things. So this, subhanAllah, is, is, is a sign, you know, that this is a person, subhanAllah, who's always looking for the good. Abu Bakr Siddiq, anhu, he just accepts Islam. Right? And he knows already, right? Uh, what the, the Prophet Sallallahu is the Prophet Sallallahu He knows that he's completely convicted. He just accepts Islam. On the first night of Islam, his first night of Islam, he calls his friends, right? And he says, come sit down. Let's have a bit of a talk. I've got something to, he didn't even delay. He didn't even say, you know what? Let's see how this thing goes. No, let's, I don't know about, you know, this. Let me just play the safe game. Didn't do any of that. He said that night, he got his closest friends together. And who are they? MashaAllah, each of them is like famous Sahaba. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, radiallahu ta'ala an. Zubair ibn Alawam, radiallahu ta'ala an. Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu ta'ala an. Right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says about Uthman, he says, Ya Uthman, likulli nabiyin rafiqun fil jannah wa anta rafiqi fil jannah. Every Nabi has a rafiq, has a close friend in jannah. You are my close friend in jannah. Right? Do you get what Abdullah ibn Umar is saying when he says, Man istanna faqad istanna biman qad mat. If you're going to follow the way of someone, follow the way of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala an. Follow their way. Because mashallah, mashallah, like that's a way to follow. That will, that will make everything easy for you and all the doors of goodness will open up. So subhanallah, we find on the very first night, in, and amongst the many, many, Abu Baidah bin Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala an, you know, so many other great sahaba on that first night, six or seven of them, most of them become Ashara Mubashara amongst the ten sahaba who were, who were the Prophet sallam, said, this person is in Jannah, that person. Imagine you're sitting like this, like in a khutbah, like you're sitting, and, and the Prophet sallam, is telling, you're in Jannah, you're in Jannah, you're in Jannah, you're in Jannah, you're in Jannah. It's just, subhanAllah, like it's, it's surreal to think and that is why Abdullah ibn Umar says, Ulaika ashabu Muhammadin abarruha quluban. They had the most cleanest of hearts. They never held anything in. Like they never held it in. That's it. You know, like you had an issue with them. The issue was for that time. And then after that, that's it. They never had, that's it. No, they didn't remember it. They didn't hold it against you. Abarruha quluban. Right? The most cleanest of, of, of hearts. ilman, And they had the most deepest of knowledge. Right? They had the most deepest of knowledge. Right? They knew exactly how to practice the deen. And they knew exactly what the Prophet wasallam required of them. They knew what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala required of them. So this is why I'm mentioning this, brothers and sisters, is that in the confusion of this world, the technological age that we're living in at the moment, an age where everything is online, you know, about hard work. You know, I was sitting, you know, I was sitting with one of the youngsters, you know, and I was telling him, man, you know, you know what? People don't work hard anymore, man. Like, people need to learn to work hard. And he says to me, he says, Sheikh, how, how can you work hard? And then, you know what? He shows me, you know, his phone. He says, you know what? Look at this. This is what are you talking about, work hard. He says, this is how much money I'm just earning just by having this app. Like, I'm just sitting there and all I'm doing is just posting videos and doing this. It's just like, that's how much money I'm earning in one week. So, subhanAllah, we have a technological age that is defying you know, all age-old rules and how we do things. And, you know, it's sometimes a bit confusing. But subhanAllah, at, at all times, the way is very clear. Stick to the basics. Follow the deen. Practice it how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum practice it. You have, you're stuck somewhere in your life. Open up a book about the stories of the Sahaba. Open up a book about the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu Maybe Riyadh al-Salihin. Try and look for the topic where you're dealing with it that day. Or just open it and read it. Subhanallah. Or even better, open up the Quran and read. Anywhere you read in the Quran, I guarantee you, you will find an inner spirituality and an inner solution to the problem that you're facing. 
because the Quran is a cure to all ills. It is, subhanAllah, hudan lin nas. It is a guidance for the, for the people. It is not just a guidance. It is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that yahdi bihi kathira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides many by it. But yes, if your, you know, your system and your program, your programming and your apps are not aligned, I'm talking about your internal self, right? On the internal. You're not, you're not aligned properly. And some people will be misguided by that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who are guided by it. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. اللهم اغفر لي وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين وجعلنا من المهديين وجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين وصلى الله تعالى خير خلق محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وأقم الصلاة